Hey everyone, my name is Ty. A lot of you may recognize me from a video that surfaced early this week uh, where I was the street the preacher the who was rebuking bridle, Kirk Franklin. We had an exchange of words on the curb here in Jacksonville, Florida. Since then, we've received a ton of questions, comments. A lot of you guys agree with us. Some of you guys agree with us. However, you disagree with the way that we went about it. Um, and some of you guys disagree completely, which is all to be expected. I wanted to make this video to share with you why I rebuked Kirk Franklin as harshly as I did and why I believe it was not wrong. I also wanted to answer a lot of the questions and objections that came up in the comments on both Kirk's Instagram post as well as on our channel. So the most obvious question that kept coming up was, did you actually end up meeting with Kirk Franklin? The answer to that question is yes. The footage you're seeing right now is the footage of Kirk and myself and our team sitting down and having a conversation about this. He also included his spiritual father, Tony Evans, on the phone and we began to talk. So I don't want to share a lot of this clip with you because I don't have Kirk's permission, but here is a clip of me saying what I felt led to say to Kirk and Tony that night. What is actually in this book? What is actually in this Bible? And the Bible says in the book of Jude that these these pastors and Tony, I, I don't know your complete ministry. I'm not sitting here condemning you. I don't I don't study up your ministry and I'm not I'm not sitting there looking to destroy people. That's not that's not my heart. What my heart breaks for is the fact that the Bible says that the wrath of God is on the whole multitude. The Bible says that when Jesus comes back, the blood of the sinners is up to the horse's bridle. But in the churches we're telling people that it's okay. Every person that I meet nowadays tells me that God loves me and we're all sinners. That's the worst doctrine in America right now because the, the, the real doctrine of Jesus Christ is that 1 John 3, 9 says, He was born of God, does not sin, for God's seed remains in him and he cannot sin. The problem that we have right now is that we've got a whole bunch of people thinking that they love God, thinking they know God, and Paul said the Antichrist doesn't set up his kingdom until there's a great falling away of the church. And I think that this thing is blinding a lot of eyes of the believers, and we came out to, be, to warn believers, because the reality is, like, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and the reality is, in these last days, there are a lot of people. Jesus said, be, the first thing he did in Matthew 24 is he said, be careful that no one deceives you. Before he even started talking about wars and rumors of wars and anything, he said, be careful that no one deceives you. Yeah. My point is that, you know, either the Bible's true or it's not, man. And the reality is, like, I, I don't I don't believe, Kirk, I'll be honest, man, I'm just being honest with you. I don't believe that God would have you stand in the presence of the wicked. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, blessed is he who doesn't stand in the way of the sinners. Nor sit in the seat of, of, of the scorners. I don't think the Lord would have you sit at B.E.T. unless it was for a time, such a time as this, for you to raise up a standard and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is coming. We are in the last days. I think God would want you to raise up a standard and say it, and probably, you'd probably give your head for it. Unfortunately, after we spoke, we did not end up agreeing. Both Tony and Kirk said that I was way out of line, and that I don't understand what it's like to become all things to all men. They used this scripture to explain the BET Awards was an opportunity for Kirk Franklin to build bridges and create opportunities. Now to the natural ear, this actually sounds pretty good. It sounds like, hey, why wouldn't you want to create new opportunities for people to meet Jesus, right? Isn't that what Kirk Franklin's job should be as a gospel artist? Um, actually, the adverse of that is true if you actually read the Bible. And this is what why we were out there. We weren't necessarily out there for Kirk Franklin so we could meet him, so I could have that conversation. Um, we go and preach many different places. We've had a lot of comments come up. Some, of peop some people have said this is a race issue. I I'm sure if you were to search our past videos, we've gone to Rockville here in Jacksonville, we've gone to uh, Deep Purple concerts, we've gone to many different places, we, we've been to many different types of people, and we will keep going. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the utmost parts of the earth. Every tribe and every tongue will be in heaven one day but not everyone from those tribes and tongues. That's why there is such an urgency for the gospel right now. And that's the reason why we were out there that night. It was for the people. There are people in America being deceived at mass 
and they're doing it under the name of Jesus. So I don't know the heart of Kirk Franklin, so I can't say to you today that Kirk Franklin is a deceiver or Kirk Franklin is being deceived. I'm not sure. I don't know. That is the reason why I rebuked him. The Bible teaches us that open rebuke is better than secret love. And after many comments, I can see that many of you out there actually know your Bibles. I'm so thankful in my heart that many people in the comments were able to say, hey, this guy had love in his heart and he was angry for the right reasons. So the next question I was asked, which was actually quite surprising, was why did you watch the BET Awards if it's so bad um, and so sinful? I'll tell you this, I did not watch the BET Awards. The only reason I was able to see this video is because, and I'll show you here on the screen, on this Facebook event that was posted by the Florida Theater here in Jacksonville, they had posted this post on their page. Our group clicked on that link and we were horrified to see that Kirk Franklin did not represent Jesus Christ the way the Bible tells us to. There is a lot of blood on Kirk Franklin's hands, and yes, I still stand by that statement. Many of you were shocked at the fact that I would say something like this, but if you were to read the book of Ezekiel, if you were to read certain books of the Bible, you will see that when we do not warn people of the judgment that is coming, that we ourselves place those people's blood on our hands. The Bible says that we are supposed to be warning people. The Bible says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Another question was about, of course, the shaking of the hands or the lack thereof. Um, you know, in 2 John, it says very clearly that whoever wishes these people who preach a different gospel, Godspeed, uh, they actually partake with them in their evil deeds. Now, I know for a fact that after the Bible says, have nothing to do, do not touch. After Kirk doing this, that he's kind of marked himself in many ways and that's how we mark ourselves is that we touch the world the bible says when we're friends with the world we become enemies of god and our goal is to become pure and spotless in god's eyes the bible says that we should be unreprovable in first colossians and i'm not standing here saying that i'm a hundred percent where exactly the lord is going to have me on that day but i'm telling you that i press forward every single day to be unreprovable in his sight and I believe that there are days that I can look and say, I am in God's presence the whole day. And that's what we are supposed to be striving for as Christians. Because Jesus said, strive to make it through the door. For I tell you, many will try, but not be able to enter. A lot of times in churches, we see pastors saying, just relax, don't strive, don't do anything. Now the Bible says, let each man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. When last did you fear and tremble for your salvation. When you, last did you fear the Lord? The Lord is to be feared. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I hope that you'd be a wise servant before Jesus comes back. Now, I'm not a hater of Kirk Franklin at all. I actually loved his music back in the day, but as I began reading my Bible and starting to understand that the Bible says, what fellowship does light have in common with darkness? I started to realize the fake for what it was. I started to realize many other artists, not just Kirk, but many other artists in the gospel, Christian rap, and Christian music industry. I myself had to get rid of many of my own albums to this day of which I'm still trying to chase down the ability for them to get taken off of certain stores all over the world because I, too, was singing songs just like Kirk Franklin. I was a pastor of a church. People loved me. I was loved by everybody and I sang songs, I made albums, people bought those albums, I was traveling Florida, I was starting to become very well known in, in, in the local industry here in Florida, and I was up and coming, I was getting invited to different destinations, different places to, to speak and to minister musically, and one day I met the Lord in my living room, and He said to me that I had a lot of blood on my hands. I too had to be woken up from my sleep, and I hope that Kirk Franklin will wake up from his. The only reason I'm angry, and this is why people ask me the question, do you hate Kirk Franklin? Uh, no, I don't hate Kirk Franklin. The Bible says that open rebuke is better than secret love. If I hated Kirk Franklin, I would not even come give him a message. I wouldn't have even entertained him or even rebuked him. Jesus said, the ones I love, I rebuke and chasten. You know, it's, it's important that we know that when there is love, brothers that love one another are okay with just saying, hey, 
you need to get this right. This is wrong in your life. And I was not angry at Kirk. What I'm really angry with is how the BET Awards continues to push out the filth that they do over and over again every single day, day in and day out. And you can hear me getting a little bit passionate about this right now. And the reason why is because I'm really angry at the fact that different communities are controlled by different kinds of entertainment. The white community is controlled by the Taylor Swifts of this world and, and the African American community is controlled by the gospel artists that are fellowshipping with artists like Kanye West. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a happy meal. Which Kirk Franklin is actually guilty of doing. Kanye West, wonderful artist. Yeah. Pro probably to me one of the most talented people in the business. And he's a friend. And he's a friend. And he's a friend of mine. He's a good friend of mine. Because he made that Jesus Walks. And, and I'm mad at that. I'm yeah, mad at that, Jesus that for not would, giving me that joint. Yeah, yeah, I, know you, I, know you, I know you wanted that song. I'm mad at Jesus for that, not giving that, me that, that joint. Was like I was like, a, Jesus, I've been walking with you. <laughs> your boy been walking with you for a minute. You could have let me have that, that record, son. So come on, son. Come with Jesus. could have gave that, me that record. That, that walk, that song. <laughs> That song was a change was in point illest, in the game. It was the illest, yo. I'm now, telling you, I love that record. He's guilty of actually going after a person who's blaspheming Jesus right to his face. And he's basically saying, I can do this. And then going on the BET Awards, and not just the BET Awards, but I've since come to know that now he has a show called Sunday's Best or something like that. I'm not going to look too much into it because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this has nothing more than the world written all over it. I pray for him that he might be bold enough to make a comeback for Jesus Christ. It was Jesus who said, if you do not acknowledge me in front of men, I will not acknowledge you in front of my Father. A lot of people try to hide the way that they rebuke people behind closed doors and they just want to show love to people um, on the outside. You know, the world needs to see what real Christian character looks like. The world needs to see what real Christians look like when they're able to stand up for truth. Here in this nation, we have a bunch of men with zero backbones, a bunch of women that uh, trying to get a man that then they end up having to bend their morals and dress immodestly. As, as you can see, if you were to watch the BET Awards show, you would see everybody singing, I want to love nobody but you, but what are they doing? They have cleavage down to here. They're, they're there to be friends with the world. And the Bible says very clearly in James 4.4, 4, You adulterers and adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity towards God? Therefore, whoever is a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Listen, I don't want that for Kirk. I don't want Kirk to have an issue going down uh, to, to judgment with God and eventually God saying to him, go for me, I never knew you. David said in the Bible, let a righteous man strike me, it will be a delight to me. Are we supposed to keep it close when people correct us? And like I said, it's not something that Kirk was getting from the secret places in his life, the relationships from his pastors. And that's why I mentioned your pastors are drunk on the wine of Babylon. Because if any pastor that Kirk is following will not call out the fact that he is being friendly with the world by having fellowship with these people, the Bible says, what does light have in common with darkness? Does the devil have anything in common with Jesus? This is the problem that we come up with in our society is that there are a lot of people confused. And the Bible says that even some of the elect will be deceived in this time. And the reason why is because everybody's going to be okay with it. Paul said that the Antichrist would not set up his kingdom until there was a great falling away. What does falling away mean? Is that the sinners? No, it's the falling away of the church. And we are seeing it right now. And so the reason I went out there was not for Kirk Franklin. Some of you will say, do you hate Kirk Franklin? That's why you showed up. No, I don't hate Kirk Franklin. This has nothing to do with Kirk Franklin. This has everything to do with God's sheep. The Bible says God's sheep know his voice. This has everything to do with warning people out there to stay away from these things. This is what the Bible says will happen in the last days. Many will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. The book of Revelation says specifically, Come out of her, my beloved. Do not participate with her in her sins, and you won't receive her plagues. You see, Babylon has dealt her wine, and that is why we went out that evening, to warn people about 
the calamity that is coming. The Bible says, O Babylon, for all of the nations have become drunk on the wine of adultery, which means they're playing hooky on God. They, they're, they're, they're with Kanye at the same time they say they're with God. When Kanye is a blasphemer, and when Kanye is talking about all works of darkness mentioned in Galatians 5, uh, you, you, you guys read your Bibles because Jesus is coming back. And that's the reason why I said to Kirk, if you really had a burden for these people, if you really had a burden for the black communities, you would have some gall, you would have some guts to take the one opportunity that you had to rebuke and, and tell them, to tell them the truth, even if it's not a spiritual churchy rebuke, but if it's just a warning to say, guys, Jesus is alive, He is real, He is coming back soon, and all men should repent everywhere. This has nothing to do with what Tony Evans and Kirk Franklin said to me in their meeting. My, my issue is that the Bible says your prophets were false, for they did not warn you of the sin that is going to lead you to calamity. And I believe that if you are a prophetic voice, that you should actually be lifting up a standard. If God does call you to do something, the world will hate you. Because Jesus said, yeah. you're, you're, you're not going to be greater than him. He said, uh, you know, no, no one's greater than and him, and he, he said, he said to his brothers when when his brothers were going, you know, to the to the feast. He said, they won't hate you; they'll hate me because I testify against their evil deeds. Agree. If you got up at the BET Awards, Kirk, and you said, "Guys, Jesus is coming back; the wrath of God is going to fall on all the children of disobedience," that, that would shut you down. You yeah. would you never have another gig. And I and 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 humbly speaking. That's why I believe that we differ. That that platform was not the platform to to present the gospel in that manner. And we, I, I, I humbly differ with you on that. They said you have to become all things to all men. And they said that this was an opportunity for them to build bridges and create opportunities. They don't realize that the Bible says no man can come to the Father unless the Holy Spirit draws him. How can you possibly come to God unless His Spirit draws you? The Bible says how can anybody know unless there's a preacher? Not a singer, not a diddy bop song at the BET Awards, but an actual preacher. And Jesus said to all of His disciples, go and preach. So my question for Kirk on the night that we met, as well as my question to you is why are so many disciples not preaching why are so many disciples not doing God's will this is because people have come to a place in their lives where they just believe what other people tell them but the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar if you were to just read your Bible God has published his word and made it available to every single person so that you can know how to respond, how to act, how to make yourself ready because the Bible says that when Jesus comes back, He comes back for a pure and a spotless bride. Are you pure? Are you spotless? This is the reason why we go out and preach and this is the reason why we called out Kirk Franklin. I'm so thankful for comments like this that show that people are waking up because we are sounding the alarm here in the last days. Please know that our heart is for the church. Our heart is for God's elect to come together, to abstain from all evil and to become pure as white. Jesus said in Revelation chapter three, he said, I charge you to buy from me gold refined in the fire and to put on white clothes to cover your shameful nakedness. What does that mean, putting on white clothes? It means purifying your hearts. The Bible says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The Bible says this kind of persuasion does not come from the one who called you. The devil is trying to persuade you through the music and entertainment you keep watching to have a double mind, a mind that's in the world and considers and values worldly things, and a mind that is in the spirit that considers and values the things of God. The Bible said, let us set our affection on the things above, not on the things below. I hope that you'd be that person today, setting your affection on God so that you can be his delight. Some people said it wasn't loving. I think I've already explained a little bit about what love is. But real love is rebuke. Real love is having the audacity to tell someone the truth even when the kisses of an enemy are sweet. But I tell you right now, a faithful reprover, a faithful rebuke 
Faithful are the wounds of a friend, the Bible says. If I was considered Kirk's friend the other night, I would have rebuked him. If I was considered his enemy, I would have kissed him, loved him, and said, have a great day, man. Hope everything is great, while I knew in my heart that he was doing things that were against God's word. I hope that you guys know that Jesus is coming back. I hope you guys can fear God and obey his commands, because the Bible says that is the whole purpose of man. I hope that you know that my heart was for Kirk, and my heart is for the body of Christ. Our heart as a team here at Untamed Truth is to preach the word, being instant, in season, and out of season. When Kirk walked up, I didn't know that that would happen. I didn't have any idea. I was doing what any preacher of God's word would do, is preaching regardless of status, preaching regardless of who was in front of me, saying the truth regardless of status, who you were, who you are. I hope that you can now see the love that our team has when we go out and preach. We are praying for every person that hears God's word. We're praying for people all over the world to start to rise up and speak God's word in spirit and in truth. Not in uh, false doctrine, not in false gospels, not just, just say we're just gonna be better, but we've gotta come back to the Bible. We've gotta return to the former things. We've gotta return to what it means to obey God's statutes and his judgments. We've gotta return to what God has already destined us for. The Bible says, have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. I wanna end by saying, regardless of your emotions about how you feel I handled the situation, the reality is that there is a truth, an overarching truth over this situation. Jesus is coming back. Jesus will return and the Bible says that he's coming to take vengeance on all of the children of disobedience. A lot of people don't know this. They don't know that they need to obey God before it's too late. They think that once they said a prayer in church and that they're fine. But the Bible says that if you are not living a lifestyle of obedience to Jesus Christ, you will find yourself unaware on that day and Jesus will come like a thief in the night. I hope that you understand that God has a great will for your life. The Bible says his thoughts about you are to prosper you, not to harm you. God loves you and he knows what's best for you and he created you with a purpose. But the world is trying to distort that now more than ever before. So I pray that you would receive this message and start living for Jesus Christ with everything that you are. Give him everything in your life and let him show you his ways, his statutes, his judgments, so that you can walk in the ways of the Lord. Be blessed and be ready.